If you want, Jared, you could start to share your screen. All right, I'm trying to uh, connect with my headphones here. Okay. Ah, there you go. Just let me know when you're ready. Okay, participants are coming in as we speak. All right, I think we'll get started. Thanks everybody for joining in to our second webinar of the Horde Academy series. Uh, today we have Jared Babick from DRAM. He's gonna talk about uh, different DRAM sprayers, application methods, and maintenance. Um, Jared, go ahead and take it away, please. Well, thank you, Steve. Thanks for, for having me. Uh, again, my name is uh, Jared. Uh, I work the, the Eastern and some of the Central region, uh, helping uh, Steve out with some commercial equipment and such. And I think everyone has a fairly good idea of who DRAM is. Uh, you know, been around for 78 years, watering tools, irrigation, and of course, uh, uh, many types of chemical application equipment. I think we're up to about uh, 40 to 45 different machines. So, um, you know, when we, when we talk about IPM, when we talk about uh, chemical application, biological application, spraying, fogging, drenching, you know, these are tools in a toolbox. And, uh, you know, the days of just pulling out the, or just being able to pull out the, the standard hydraulic sprayer and sort of make it work, um, you know, have been amended and we now have different types of equipment. Um, you know, you can, you can use a, a wrench to pound a nail, uh, but a hammer would probably work a little bit better. So it's the same with equipment. You might be using a piece of equipment that you've had for a very long time and, and might, it might be somewhat effective, but there could be a piece of equipment out there that might uh, make you a better applicator, save you a lot of time as far as labor and uh, make your product more saleable. Uh, and in the end, all those uh, equal to uh, more money in your pocket. So we're a little time off, uh, which is sometimes worth more than money. So uh, we're going to jump in here. Hey, and Jared, can I interrupt one sec? Yeah. Uh, yeah I forgot to note, if you want to ask questions uh, down at the bottom of the screen, um, when you move your mouse around, there's a Q&A. And that question will come to me. And then I'll jump in and, and uh, ask the question to Jared. And we'll see if we can get it answered. All right. Yeah, thanks, Jared. Jared. Yeah, thanks, Steve. This is, I want to keep this extremely, you know, informal. If there's ever a question that anybody has about uh, what we're talking about, certainly jump in uh, because it's probably a question that somebody else might have. Uh, so please feel free to, to interrupt me at any time with a question. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's cold out in uh, Minnesota and it's cold out in Pittsburgh. So there's no reason to go outside anywhere. Let's just sit and chat all day. Uh, but uh, getting into effective pesticide coverage, you know, it all, all, all boils down to having the proper equipment. Uh, even if you got the proper equipment, having an understanding of what it does well and what it does not do well, an understanding of the technique or, or how to use the, the piece of equipment you have to get the most out of it. Uh, and of course, maintenance. I'll be talking about this towards the end, but, um, you know, keeping a machine clean, keeping it running well. Uh, can make the difference between a, you know, a horrible evening and a, and a quick evening and being done and out of the greenhouse and nursery. So uh, these sort of four points are going to make up what I'll be talking about today. Um, before I get into it, whenever we start talking about uh, making applications in the greenhouse and nursery, uh, we like to use a unit of measure uh, called a micron, and it denotes the, the water particle size that is coming out of a machine. Uh, and for example, one 100 micron size water particle is about the width of a human hair. And we talk about this because we're talking about surface area and the amount of surface area that we get when we're using different types of equipment. And you'll see here that with one 100 micron size droplet, we're able to get a little over a thousand 10 micron size droplets. And so we're, we're talking about different machines, 
we're going to be talking about these different numbers, but this will give you an, a good idea of what that looks like. Uh, and like I said, one 100 micron size droplet will get you about eight uh, 40 to 50 micron size droplets. And again, a little over a thousand of, of a 10 micron size droplet. And to give you a little bit better idea of what this looks like when it comes to uh, your typical plant pest on a leaf tissue surface, uh, you know, one 100 micron size droplet looks like this. When we have a, a machine that has, is a low volume applicator that we're gonna be talking about, you get those eight droplets, we're talking about 50 microns, that's what that looks like. And of course, a, a whole house applicator that would be creating 10 micron size droplets, again, that's what that 1,000 uh, pieces of, 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 of 10 micron droplets looks like on a leaf tissue surface. And you might think, well, geez, that's just, that's the best way to do it, I've got complete coverage. Yes and no. Again, tools in a toolbox, there'll be times when you want that and there'll be times that you won't. So just because you have complete coverage uh, doesn't mean it's the best tool depending on the pest, uh, the time of year, or the, 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 uh, the plant that you're working with. So uh, there's a lot that goes into it. Uh, when we're talking about application method, uh, we, we've narrowed it down into three categories. The traditional hydraulic sprayer method, this is high volume. Uh, again, your traditional tank sprayer. We've got in the middle of the road, again, that high volume being that 100 microns and up. Uh, we've got low volume machines like our cold fogger and turbo that we're talking about, which are sort of that 40 to 50 micron size droplet. And these are what we call targeted low volume or directional fog is the way I do it. They don't have the drift that the true ultra low volume machines like our auto fog and pulse fog do that that treat an entire space and are, you're unable to contain the, the, the uh, particle to a certain area. So these are sort of how we break these, uh, these particle sizes down. And we're gonna dive a little bit into each of them uh, on, on what they do well and what they don't do well. Again, getting to high volume, hydraulic, we're talking about anything from your traditional backpack sprayer uh, to a 20 gallon to a 50 or 100 or 200 gallon sprayer. These are machines that are typically either battery powered, uh, electric or gas powered uh, with different tank sizes, variable length uh, reels and different gun types. This is probably the most traditional uh, use machine in a greenhouse or nursery. Uh, typically high flow rates, you need a high volume, a lot of water to cover that leaf surface. Typically, if you see it, you're trying to get the surface wet and trying the best to get that under the leaf as well. We're working on standard rates. When you're working with your chemistries, your, your uh, insecticides and fungicides, you're gonna be working off of that per 100 gallon rate. If there's an area-based rate, you wanna take that into account, and we'll talk a little bit about that later as far as application timing. And again, this is a wet application. It's going to look wet. You're gonna want runoff typically, and do your best to get underneath that leaf surface with this high volume which is why it takes a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of moisture or a lot of, a lot of uh, fluid to do so. so. And again, particles over 100, typically variable uh, depending on the pressure, but anywhere between 100 and 300 microns, depending on the machine that you're working with is what you're getting out of these. But this is, your, this is the go-to. Everybody should have uh, a sprayer like this in their, in their arsenal uh, for pest and disease control. Uh, when I get into hydraulic sprayers, I start talking about why you might choose a certain size. Uh, a lot of that can depend on how much area you have to treat, um, uh, the width of your rows, uh, and the total square footage of the greenhouse. So you might be looking at something like uh, a 20 gallon sprayer that has a 12 to 15 foot throw like this. You know, this might be perfect for a small greenhouse grower, a retailer, someone that wants to do some spot spraying, but because it has a, a, a fairly low output rate, it might take a little bit longer when you get into a little bit larger uh, greenhouse operation. As opposed to uh, our Hydra machine, which you can see the difference in the distance of the throw and the output. You know, when it comes time when you have to fill up a 20 gallon machine two or three or four or five times, it might make sense just to go and bite the bullet and get a 50 or 100 gallon machine that has triple the output and double the throw 
and really reduce the time that you're in that space uh, making those applications, you might actually be more effective because you're getting uh, more coverage on that plant material. Um, going down in particle size from, again, 100 plus microns to 40 to 50, we get into that targeted low volume. And these are the, this is the cold fogger. This is our turbo hybrid uh, machine. But basically, these are like a directional fog. They don't put out the amount of volume that a hydro sprayer does. Uh, but it uh, is a much smaller particle and a much drier application. Uh, so you're working with much lower flow rates. You know, a normal 20 gallon uh, MSO sprayer might do 10 to 15,000 square feet uh, because of the amount of water that it puts out in the size of the particle. This is the same 20 gallon tank, but we have a 3,000 PSI pump instead of a 500 PSI pump, which is creating much smaller particles uh, so I get much greater coverage out of a unit like this. This 20-gallon tank will actually treat 70,000 square feet of greenhouse or nursery space uh, because of the, the smaller particle size that is created. We're typically working with reduced rates, and with reduced rates, typically has, there is a conversion factor. I know um, uh, one of the issues that the growers can have moving from a hydraulic sprayer to a targeted low volume applicator like this or an ultra low volume is an understanding of uh, converting those rates from a uh, ounce per hundred uh, uh, to an area based rate. And so you can rely on DRAM and, and TESPIN to kind of give you that information. Uh, we've worked with most of the companies to come up with those rates. So uh, while they may not be directly on the label, uh, we can help you and assist in, in finding the products that would work best through them. So. This is typically going to be a drier application. Again, you're using much less volume, so it's not necessarily going to look wet or runny. The water will be running off. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll have to get into sort of that trusting phase of, I sprayed it, it may not look wet, but I know that I got it there. And of course, again, these are droplets that are less than 100 microns, typically around 40 or 50. And to show you what these machines look like, you'll see them making these applications. The plants won't be uh, they won't look wet. They won't move around a lot. They'll just kind of uh, move around. But these particles do a wonderful job of, of getting into the canopy, uh, getting underneath that leaf surface without using a high volume of water. You can see in that last part of the video that the grower was able to move right next to the plant material, but because the particles are so small, they weren't really hurting the plants, but just kind of helping them move around to get that fog uh, into the plant material. And our last category based on particle size that we're working with is the ultra low volume. Uh, these are machines like the auto fog and pulse fog, where we're using very little water, where you might use um, 10, 15, 20 gallons of water in 10,000 square feet of spraying, we're using about 64 to 120 ounces. So less than a gallon of water per 10,000 square feet is being used. And that's because we're using water particles that are five to 10 microns. So we don't use very much water at all. Again, we're working with reduced chemical rates so we can assist with um, some of the conversion that you'll need to do. Uh, it's not that difficult. Uh, again, this is a, a whole house treatment. The big difference between these machines and the targeted low volume and the hydraulic sprayer is that these are treating the entire space. If you have a 30 by 96 and you put a fog in there, it is going to treat top to bottom. If you have three gutters and they are open, you're going to need to treat all three gutters at the same time. You, are, you will be unable to contain the fog unless you drop plastic or shut a door uh, to contain it. So it does wonderful for 
getting into a canopy, a very thick canopy, if you've got baskets up high and they're hard to treat, a fog is the way to go, especially the more full you get. The more dense you are, the better a fog is at moving about um, that, that airspace. Uh, typically with these kinds of machines, we do like to have HAF fans running to help them uh, distribute that material around and set up. Uh, but again, this is wonderful when it's uh, a very busy late season, you know, you need to get out there and spray and just don't have time. You can set these machines up and go home um, or go through the houses very quickly w uh, with the pulse, something like the pulse fog. Uh, again, smaller than 25 microns as far as droplet size and uh, billions and billions of droplets. So we talked about coverage on that leaf tissue with that uh, greenhouse pest. We're getting coverage both on the leaf tissue surface, but we're also treating any spores that might be floating around. If you think about foliar diseases, botrytis, powdery mildew, these machines are, are wonderful tr for treating the space along with that leaf tissue. Jared. Yes. Do you have the HAFNs on while you are spraying or, or while you're fogging, or do you turn them on after? That's a great question. Uh, typically, when you are in there, if, in, in, with the auto fog, which is a picture of it right here, there's a timer. So you're setting that machine up at five o'clock, you're going home and it's coming on and the fan should be on while it's fogging. In terms of the pulse fog, we'll see a video of that where it's a very rapid application, you know, three or four minutes a house. You might stand there and you'll have the fans off while you're fogging, so you're just not uh, breathing in or pushing that fan, that, that fog around. But as soon as you leave, you do want the fans on to help distribute the product around. Okay. Okay. So the auto fog is an air assisted machine. This is a large uh, vegetable grower in Canada who has theirs just permanently set up. You can buy these heads with or without a uh, compressor, uh, but uh, they are just using air to create that fog. And the next one is our, our pulse fog. These are a little different. These are for growers that have multiple individual spaces that need to be able to rapidly move and, and be portable, uh, as opposed to the auto fog, which are designed for a few spaces or, or larger spaces that are doing a single treatment. And you'll see in this video, the real benefit of fog is that you're able to rapidly apply the product and it's just going to hang for hours and hours. So it's treating things down low, treating things up high, and it's going to hold uh, for, for, again, three to four hours. You'll come back, you'll vent, and you'll be done. So that's the benefit of ultra low volume is its speed and ease of use of treating an entire space at one time. So... Um, uh, and, and a couple of last minute ones, if you have a larger space, there are PTO tractor driven machines that basically run on a PTO drive. So much larger operations, they could basically go through and throw a fog two to 300 feet. Uh, they're just fogging water, so no worries on uh, why that cab's open, uh, but just a really quick way to treat a really large space it's good to know that this fog is not usable outside. This is not like uh, a blower uh, or, you know, a big sprayer that you might use in a field. These droplets are too small. The auto fog, pulse fog, uh, even the cold fogger, the particles are too small. They will just float away. So this is for contained spaces uh, in, a, in a greenhouse uh, space. Uh, there is a new machine that has just come out. Uh, it's called a turbo UOV. This is, this is a hybrid applicator. Uh, it can do a little bit of both. It can do some of what the cold fogger can do, so light misting, 
uh, but it can also do some uh, fogging just like you saw with the pulse fog. It's just not nearly as fast or has the coverage uh, that either of the machines might have. But for a smaller grower uh, or someone who just has to do some, some spot treatments, uh, this is a little unit that plugs in. It's electric, so you don't have to worry about gas. Uh, again, you can move it around. There's four to 5,000 square feet worth of treatment, uh, but it's perfectly sized for spot spraying uh, or doing some, some whole house fogging for just a couple of spaces if someone doesn't need a larger piece of equipment uh, like the pulse fog, uh, auto fog, or the cold fogger. So uh, that's something that's out there as well. Um, so we've talked about the different machines that are available, uh, but you know, that isn't the only decision that needs to be made you know, when we're looking at our hydraulic sprayer, we're working at our gun choice, you wanna be looking at your flow rate. And this, this comes down to more applicator training, not machine training. Uh, a lot of growers ask for, for larger nozzle tips, they want more flow, they wanna get it done faster. You know, most of our machines come with either a half a gallon per minute or a one and a half gallon per minute uh, nozzle tip on the end. Anything more than two, we feel is too wet. The goal should be, good atomization, not high flow. We want smaller particles that are going to diffuse into that plant canopy. We just don't want to soak it down um, uh, you know, with a high pressure hose. Uh, you want to look at your pressure range. If, you're, if your machine has the ability to have adjustable pressure, see what that mist looks like at a low pressure and a high. Of course, the higher it is, the finer the droplets, but again, the more, uh, uh, the more coverage you're going to get and the more drift you might have as well. You wanna look at the pattern. You wanna look at the width, the direction of the momentum, where it's going, how even it is. Look at the pattern adjustment on the gun if it is available. And what are you spraying? Are you doing young plants? Are you doing a particular crop that can't uh, have any kind of overspray based on what might be next to it? Or do you have a really thick canopy where you're gonna be spending hours and hours and hours? All of these questions should go into trying to decide if there's one piece of equipment or maybe multiple pieces of equipment that you might have based on what's going on in your greenhouse. It's a heck of a lot easier to fog a really dense canopy, really thick row, uh, rather than spend hours and hours and hundreds of gallons of, uh, of chemical and water uh, to try and spray something. The gun that you have, you wanna look at how it's being used. There are two parts of what's coming out of the gun. There's the propulsion and there's the diffusion. You want to be using the end of the spray pattern to make your applications on your plant material. You want that diffuse pattern to swirl around and move around. We don't want to use the directional pattern that we have just coming out of the gun. That's always the diffuse pattern that we're looking at. When it comes to the type of uh, attachment that you have, there are, a, 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 there are quite a number of them. There's the old JD-9 guns. There might be a drench adapter so that you can do some drenching. Uh, while you're out spraying, if you need to switch it over and do some drenching of material, uh, there are a bunch of different types of guns depending on what you're trying to achieve uh, in the greenhouse. Uh, so look to these. There are quick connects available uh, so that you can you know, quickly move in and out depending on type of the plant material or the pest or disease that you're trying to, 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 um, to take on. Again, looking at that pattern is the best way to go. When, you, when the greenhouse is empty, fire up these machines and look at that pattern and see if it's what you need or what you're trying to accomplish. Now, when it comes to drenching, because we talked about spraying a lot, we talked about small particles, but sometimes that's not the most efficient method to make chemical applications, whether it be a fungicide, an insecticide, um, uh, an IGR or PGR. Uh, so drenching at the soil level might be the best way to do it. And there's a couple of methods that, that the growers have used um, uh, to, to, get, to get this done. One is that one to 1,000 method. They basically hold the, hold the hose on, they have everything, they have their injector running and they're counting one, two, three, one, two, three. And you know, as long as you're staying on that path, uh, you'll be good to go. But it can be time consuming and can get inaccurate uh, and uneven very quickly. Uh, there is the bucket and measuring cup method. That's basically where you're taking a measured amount in a cup and putting it in each pot. It is extremely tedious, but it is more accurate. Uh, and of course, the third method are dedicated dosing systems uh, that are available. Basically, they combine that timing method and the accuracy of the cup method. Um, you're, you're automating these doses and you're also 
uh, automating the time from plant to plant so you're not wasting product in between the plants. Basically, these machines, and there's a video of it running, these machines, this is called a chemdose. You have your stock solution with your injector. Your hose connects to the unit that you wear. You set your dosing amount, whether that is two ounces or four ounces or eight ounces, and then you can actually set the time in between the doses so that you push a button once, it, dis it distributes your four ounces, it takes a two second break, allowing you from, to go from pot to pot so you don't lose any of this material that you're paying for uh, outside of the pot, but it evenly uh, delivers uh, the same amount of solution from pot to pot without losing anything in between. So we've gotten past the types of equipment that are available, and it's time to start talking about training, uh, which is probably as important, if not more important, to the, the application pro process. And it all starts with practice. And this is a great time of the year, just before the season gets going, is to practice spraying, pulling out all of your equipment and evaluating it. Is it, is it in good working order? Is there anything that needs to be replaced on it? Is it doing what you need. Did you struggle last year uh, because the, the sprayer wasn't large enough, fast enough, the particle size wasn't getting the job done? Um, and is it time to try something different? Like I said, there are 40 some different machines that we have available. Uh, and so there might be something that might be saving you time, uh, labor, and uh, efficiency. And of course, calibrating yourself. We took this video of a grower and we didn't tell them why we were taking it, but uh, take a look. You'll see how they're spraying. He's basically walking up and down the row. And if you have a 1.25 gallons a minute coming out of that gun, you've got twice as much coming right in front of you as you do at the end. So not the most effective way to spray, uh, but a good way to show you what not to do. And what we're talking about is if you're the applicator, you don't want to be spraying just here and going left and right. You want to be spraying at the far end and keeping that same distance between you and you saw that diffuse pattern that we talked about in the previous slide and walking backwards and keeping that gun at the same level and same distance between you and the plant material to make sure that you're evenly distributing uh, that chemistry to the plant material. Other things you could do to train yourself are bring your applicators in, if it's you or if it's somebody else, to do some training uh, to make sure they're getting that chemical where it needs to be. Uh, this is hydrosensitive paper. You can get it from us or anybody else, but it's a great way to get into the greenhouse and train you and your staff on uh, if you're getting that product out the correct way. When we do a lot of training at growers, we'll actually go in in the morning and staple some of these hydrosensitive pieces to various parts of the greenhouse, of course, remembering uh, where we put them, and then bring the staff in and have them spray. And you can see, let me go back to this, this part right here, the yellow paper will turn purple based on what kind of coverage we get. If it's a good fine particle, we'll get a bunch of nice purple speckles. If it's a very high flow, it'll basically just turn that paper uh, purple. Uh, so you won't get any speckles. But this is a great way to bring your crew in and train yourself to make sure that your applications are being done uh, effectively. Uh, because if you're not getting the, the, the chemical to where it needs to be, it's why, why spray to begin with? So you want to practice with different types of equipment. If you don't, it might be time to purchase something that, that might make you more effective. Changing up your technique. If you've been doing it the same way, and every year you're fighting Whitefly or fighting aphid or fighting mealybug, uh, it might be a simple change in technique that might make the difference. And of course, most importantly, using the guidelines. If it says on a label to put a certain amount uh, per thousand square feet or per acre, use that guideline when you're making those applications. And this all boils down to timing yourself and having an understanding of what your machine can do as far as an output. This is a, an example of a 30 by 96 greenhouse. 
you've got 10 gallons made up, but you don't know the output rate of the tip on your gun. And so you start spraying and you get two and a half minutes in and you get five minutes in and you look back and it looks like you got enough and you keep spraying, you keep spraying and seven and a half minutes in, you're at a chemical and you don't, you know, it's all because we're not really completely sure what our output rate is of our machine and our gun. If we were to take the same greenhouse with an understanding that I have 10 gallons of solution and the output of that gun is one gallon per minute and I have a watch with me or I just sort of know how long it takes now, I can move through there and know that I've used two and a half gallons a minute, two and a half gallons, five gallons at the, at the midpoint. I should be at seven and a half gallons used three quarters of the way. And of course, 10 minutes, I should be empty. And I've made an effective application of my chemistry just because I knew what the output rate of my nozzle was. So that could be, that could be the difference between spraying too fast, spraying too slow, and not getting an adequate amount of product into that greenhouse space. Again, you could do this with a gun. Uh, a bucket and a watch. If you know the tip, uh, the kind of tip you have, if you don't, we can probably tell you uh, what that gun tip is. Uh, but simply turning that machine on, uh, putting an output on there of one minute and, and measuring that flow will tell you if, you're, if your machine is running where it needs to be. And lastly, and I think almost as important as anything I've talked about is proper maintenance because these machines need to run, they need to start you know, when it's the, the middle of April, the middle of May, and you've only got one or two hours to get something done in a very busy day that you had, you want that machine to just fire up and do what it's supposed to do instead of uh, tinkering around with it to get it, to get it running. So keeping that machine running can make the difference between uh, staying ahead and, and being behind. Uh, it starts with keeping them clean. I know that I've been to a lot of greenhouses and I've looked at a lot of sprayer tanks and they just sort of, you know, they get used and they sort of get abused. Uh, because it's a big opening and it, it, it will usually work. But uh, uh, when it comes to the smaller machines like the auto fog, the pulse fog, anything with those smaller water particle sizes, those, those tips can get uh, clogged very easily. So the smaller the particle size that you're working with, the more important it is to keep them clean. Machines like those auto fogs and pulse fogs should be cleaned after every application. And of course, checking the nozzle accuracy typically over a season or two, depending on how often it's used, and the coarseness of the chemistry being put through the machine, uh, those tips can get worn out, which can uh, reduce the, the good atomization that we want coming out of that gun. Uh, so you wanna check that and, and change those nozzle tips uh, as you need to. When you're running the machines, if there's a problem with uh, the machine, this is not the most effective way uh, to fix the situation. This is again, this is a cold fogger gun that has 3000 PSI running through it and, and the grower has decided to just zip tie it uh, to fix that big crack in the gun. That is a, that is a liability issue, if anything, um, uh, for the applicator using that machine. So if there is a problem with the, with the gun, this is the time of year to look through the equipment to make sure everything is running properly, uh, nothing is broken and, and get it fixed before we get into the season. Along with that, simple maintenance of cleaning up your filters will go a long way, whether it's a hydraulic sprayer, a filter that might be sitting in the back or could be underneath. Our little MSO filter sits underneath the tank. Uh, so just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. This uh, inline filter that goes in the cold fire gun has been extremely clogged, uh, so should be replaced. And, and just a couple of weeks ago, I was at a grower who had bought a, new, a brand new machine I was standing there with the head grower and the section grower had cleaned out the tank. And I said, oh, let's just, let's just see if the, the lines are clean. And we opened up the filter bay and not only was the filter body looking like this, there was not actually a screen filter in the filter. A previous applicator had pulled the filter out probably for a bio application and had forgotten to put the screen filter back in. So, um, uh, the, the, head, the head grower wasn't, wasn't happy, we'll just say that, but it's a, it's a good uh, idea to make sure that as you're cleaning out the tank to make sure to run fluid, clean water through the pump and through the filter to clean out those lines. Uh, it's one of the easiest things you can do to keep your machine running as it should. 
And again, lastly, but not least, I always say once a year, uh, changing out your, your nozzle tips, even if you have a really old sprayer, it's sort of like a car. If you put new tires on an old car, it just sort of drives better. Your machine will just work better just because of a, a simple exchange of nozzle tips. So um, if you've got, you know, old sprayers out there, JD9 guns or MSTGs, you know, um, ask Steve, he can get you tips. They're not expensive. You know, they're 15 or $20, but uh, it can make life a heck of a lot easier uh, just by uh, unthreading and threading back on a tip. So uh, I'm finished up here. If anybody has any questions, I'm, I'm happy to take them. Um, and if you don't, again, uh, the, the DRAM website is always the best source of information that we have. You can download uh, white papers on choosing equipment. We have a, a specific white paper, and I'll give that link to Steve. And, of course, uh, our forum was, has lots of questions uh, and answers available for, for, for growers and applicators looking to uh, make a decision on, on a possible equipment choice. All right. Thanks, Jared. Great job as usual. Um, so far, no questions have popped up, but uh, everybody knows they can contact me or contact Sam or contact James um, if they do have some questions uh, that come up. And thanks a lot, everybody, for attending and taking the time out of your day to attend. And one quick um, housekeeping note, if you were one of the people that called in, I saw there was a handful of people that called in, let your testman rep know so you can get uh, your Hort Academy credit. Um, with that, we'll end the webinar and everybody have a great day. Thanks. Thank you.